Hey YouTube, Anthony here from Labworks and today I'm going to show you how to take a simple image from the internet, convert it to a SVG, and cut it into segments so that you can layer the pieces together and have more control over the image data. For this tutorial I found a simple black and white JPEG file of Albert Einstein. Save the image to a folder that you'll be able to find easily. Any image with neat borders and segments will work best, the more complex, the more tricky it can be to work. As you can see, zooming into the JPEG data, it's not clear defined borders and edges, and it has a white background. We'll fix all this up in Adobe Illustrator. I'm using Adobe Illustrator 2022, but most later versions of Illustrator should be able to perform the tasks we need to make this happen. Now that we have the JPEG image open in Illustrator, we can see that the background is solid white, and it's simply just a single image. We're going to remove the white background, and convert the lines to paths simply by performing an image trace. Select the image in Illustrator, then navigate to Window, Image Trace. You should see the Image Trace panel appear with various options. So simply, we need to expand the Advanced section and check the Ignore White box. Then check the Preview checkbox. It may take a little while depending on your computer specs. Once the image trace preview is complete, you should see that the selected image no longer has a solid white background. To compare the result to the source image, click the eye icon next to View, Source Image. You can see it toggles between the original JPG image and the converted image. Once you're happy with the result, uncheck the Preview box and click the Trace button. Now that the image trace is complete, we want to click on Expand to expand the trace data into individual paths. Again depending on your computer specs it may take a few moments to process. Once it's complete, you should see the paths appear throughout the image. At this point, everything is grouped, which means that all the individual parts, eyes, eyebrows, etc. are grouped. We can ungroup these objects so that we can work with the data in a more controlled way. Simply right-click on the image and click Ungroup. Once it's ungrouped, you can start to drag around parts that aren't joined together by paths. So here we can drag the light bulb away, and you can also see the eyes, eyebrows, are all separated. Now I'll regroup the pieces together so that I can copy the whole image easily to a new file. Now we select our image and copy, and paste into our new document. And I'll resize the image to fit on my bed space. Now here's where the fun begins. If you zoom in and set a stroke color, you'll notice that each of the paths will be set to that color. Also make sure you set your color mode here to RGB if you're using K40 Whisperer. But what if we want to just have a cut path going around the entire object? Well the first thing we need to do is ungroup the image components again, so that we can drag away the light bulb, we're not going to include that in this tutorial.
Now that it's ungrouped, you'll see that you can drag each component around separately. Components are defined as parts that are joined by paths. If a path doesn't join, it's treated as a separate component, like the eyes, nose, mustache, inner ears, etc. So now we want to create a cutting path around the outside perimeter of our image. To do this, we simply select the rectangle tool, and create a rectangle over the entire image, make sure you leave plenty of room around the outside of the image. It doesn't need to look pretty, it just needs to cover the whole image and have room around the outside of the image. It's a bit easier to see it all if you leave the rectangle black, and as you can see when I hover my mouse over my image paths behind it, they appear as a preview. So now that we have a rectangle, select the selection tool from your illustrator toolbox. Then select the entire rectangle and image. You should see the paths popping through the black rectangle as a preview of what's behind it. Now we're going to use a magic tool called the Shape Builder tool. This tool is truly amazing. Now with the Shape Builder tool selected, if I hover my mouse over the rectangle, keeping outside the perimeter of my image, you'll see a crosshatch pattern appear over the top of the rectangle segments outside of the image's perimeter. Simply left-click this crosshatch pattern once. It may not show anything happening, but the magic has already happened. Now go back to your selection tool, you want to deselect everything in your document, do this by clicking on the light gray background outside of any of your document's components. Now that everything is deselected, simply click on the black rectangle in the space outside of your image's perimeter, and drag that piece away. That piece can be discarded for this tutorial, we don't need it. And as you can see, magic, we're left behind with a shape that is the exact shape and size of our image's outside edge. Now we can select our new shape, and drag it away from our image, and we can see that it's now a brand new shape that we can manipulate. For K40 Whisperer, red means cut, so I want to remove the fill on our new shape, and create a red stroke edge. And there's our cut path. We could put this into K40 Whisperer right now and tell it to cut this shape out of some MDF or plywood. We can also leave it surrounding our image, where we could raster our image onto the wood and cut around it too. Let's drag this out the way for now though, and we'll go on to cutting up the rest of our image into parts. I'm going to make a copy of my image just as a backup. Now we're going to do the same thing again, creating a new rectangle over the top of our image. Then choosing our selection tool again and select both the new rectangle and the image behind. We'll again use the shape builder tool, only this time we're going to hover our mouse over Einstein's face until we see the same crosshatch pattern, and left click it once. Then we choose our selection tool, Deselect all of the components in our document, and hover our mouse over the black rectangle until we see the face shape appear by itself. Now we can drag Einstein's face away from our image to reveal the new shape created. This new shape can also be manipulated in the same way, fill, stroke, etc. Here I'm just setting the rectangle color to transparent so you can see what's going on. But it is probably easier to just leave it black to cut out all the segments. So going back to our new shape, Einstein's face, I set the fill to transparent, and the stroke to red for cutting. But what if I want to edit individual parts inside this shape, for example, the eyes or mustache? We can't just ungroup this because they're not individual components.
We need to click the Release button on the right, which will release each of the components as separate paths. Now that I've done this you can see that I can select the components inside his face individually. Now I can group these individual components together, but I can ungroup them again later if I want to make changes. Now remember, I made the rectangle transparent. It's still there but you can't see it. I'm just selecting the entire image and rectangle again, and I'll use the shape builder tool to start cutting out more parts. I'll do his shirt now. So now I'm going to do his hair. You'll notice that I left click on each of the segments in the same process, you can cut as many parts using the shape builder tool as you like, then go back with the selection tool and manipulate those newly cut shapes. And we basically rinse and repeat this process until we've cut all the shapes out that we need.
Thank you for watching, make sure to like, share subscribe for more content.